What's up everybody? My name is Kevin Griffith and this is The Holler Barbecue. Today, I have another cooking battle for you. As you may know, the PK Grill and Smoker just won the World Steak Championship down in Fort Worth, Texas. So today, I wanna see if the Grill of Grill Silverback Pellet Grill can stand toe to toe with it. So sit right there and let's get to battling. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. And so today I wanted to fire up my PK Grill and Smoker for you for the first time, um, at least for you guys seeing it. But I decided, you know, I don't know if you know, but like this last couple of weeks, two weeks ago, um, there was a World Steak Championship down in Fort Worth, Texas, and a guy cooking on a PK actually won it. So I thought, hey, if I'm gonna cook a steak, let's do my own battle. So I'm gonna bring out one of my other grills. Today we're gonna be doing the Silverback against this one. So for the PK, I'm just running just original Kingsford Blue. Got a, about a chimney full. I lit it up with just one of these uh, little charcoal lighters. Once it gets good and hot, go ahead and dump it into the grill. Added a few extra briquettes that are unlit on there to try to help bring the temperature up. And then I'm putting my entire grill grates on top this is uh, with the regular grill grate that comes with the PK plus uh, a set of grill grates to go on top so we can get it super hot and uh, get a good sear on it. Now as far as the silverback goes, we're gonna, I'm cranking it up to 500 degrees. And I'm also gonna be using a set of grill grates on it just so that we are, we're even as far as the cooking surface that we have, it's just the cookers are gonna be different. Now let's go over what we got here. So I have a couple of ribeyes. These are choice grated. They both weigh exactly right at a pound a piece. They're not very thick. Let me see if I can show you here. Not very thick, so it's not gonna take very long to cook these things. So here's how it's gonna go. We're gonna start with a PK first, because I only got one set of grill grates, so I'm gonna have to transfer them over. So the, the PK is actually rolling right now, and it's coming up to temperature. I'm gonna let the grill grate sit in there for about 15 minutes. Should be good and hot by then. We're going to cook. We're gonna start it off a minute and a half. Then we're gonna give it a, a, you know, a quarter turn to get those nice cross marks on it. Another minute and a half, then we're gonna flip it over. Do the same thing, a minute and a half, quarter turn after another minute and a half. And then from then, we're just cooking to an internal temperature. I want both of them to hit right around 130 degrees. Anywhere between 128 and 130 is gonna be perfect for me. And then once we're done with the PK, we'll pull it off and I will transfer the grill grates, which are gonna be screaming hot already, over into the silverback. I'm gonna give it five, 10 minutes over there just to let it stabilize. And then we're gonna cook it the same exact way. You know, the whole, the whole point of this is just to see if there's a, a big difference in between a charcoal grill or a pellet grill as far as steaks go you know you're not we're not looking at smoking anything here so you're not going to get very much you know as you know smoke flavor but we should have two really nice grilled steaks now, i just want to see if the silverback can compete with a world championship grill such as the pk so let me show you what we're going to do with these steaks so i got two steaks that are almost identical about a pound a piece we're gonna season them up the same way. So first we're gonna start off with uh, just a little oil. You don't need much for ribeye, but I just want something to help our seasonings bind and act as uh, somewhat of a, a non-stick. We're gonna start off with just some regular sea salt. Now we're not trying to put a whole bunch on here because I'm also gonna hit it with some Montreal seasoning which also has salt in it. So we don't need a ton here. Then we hit it with our Montreal. Once again, not a whole bunch. We're gonna flip them over and do the same thing. All right, now that we're seasoned up, we're just waiting on the grills to come up to where we want them to be. And then we're gonna start this battle. 
All right, so the PK is ready. The grill grates are smoking hot. We're gonna go ahead and get this steak on here. I'm just gonna find me a good spot right here. Just give a good little mash down. Just to get all across those real good. And it is super hot. So from there, let's go ahead and we'll set a timer for, I don't know if you can see that, a minute and a half. Get it closed up. And then in a minute and a half, we'll do a quarter turn. All right, it's been a minute and a half now. So we'll just go under here and just turn this thing a quarter turn, get it onto a brand new spot on the grill. Now, one thing I do like about this grill is how it opens up from the side. Now, this is the original PK and it opens up from the side. You know, me being a short dude, it doesn't burn me. I've been burnt many times by other grills because of the way that the lids open, you know, upwards. This one opens to the sideways, never burnt. So another minute so and a half. So another minute and a half. So now it's time to actually flip it over. And let's go find us a, a new spot. I'm gonna put it right here. See, perfect grill marks, guys. I'm loving these grill grates. Another minute and a half. All right, so this is our last turn. And this time we're not gonna set a timer. We're more going for temperature here. And I actually wanna baste it here. So what I have here is just a mixture of butter and just a little bit of uh, Worcestershire sauce. Just wanna put across the top of it. And let's go ahead and get a reading just to see where we are. So not bad, we're actually just about there. These are thinner steaks, so I'm gonna give it just a couple seconds later. All right, we just hit our temperature right at 130, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and pull this thing off and let it rest. Let me get these grates moved over to the silverback. All right, the silverback's ready to go. Let's go ahead and get this one in. All right, it's time to flip it over. All right, then our last twist. A little bit of that base on there. Remember this last one, we're not really doing time here, we're just going temp. It's almost about done with the other one, right at that. And it's like, this one's gonna be very close too. We're at like 127 right now. So just close it up just for a second, let that butter set in, and then we're gonna call it good and we'll compare them. All right guys, so our cook is complete. I tried to go as fair as possible here, cooking them, trying to cook them the same exact way. Now, my first challenge to you is, can you tell which one is which right now? So this would be your left side, this would be your right side looking at the screen right now. Comment below which one you think it is. Is this the PK or is this the silverback? And also, is this the PK or the silverback? So left or right, let me know below to see if you get it correct or not. All right, so the answer is this one is the PK and then this one is the silverback. There's not very much difference in appearance. They're both screaming with juice. I'm actually having to keep a, a paper towel back here because my table that I'm on is not very uh, level and juice is just running off the back over here. So as far as appearance goes, they look all virtually the same to me. Um, the big thing's gonna come down to taste, right? So let's go ahead 
I'll turn them this way for you. The PK has been resting longer, so we'll go ahead and go into that one first. Go ahead and cut it all the way through. I'm waiting on this to bloom out for you a little bit, but we got, we're, we're pretty medium here. Looks very good. Let's see here. So you can see it. This is why I always cook steaks by temp. I mean, we could, this one, you really could have went by time, um, but to get it perfect, you know, you, I like to use the temperature. And then the silverback should look virtually the same. Give it time to uh, bloom out here a little bit. All right, sorry if the lighting's not the greatest. I'm outside right now and the sun's kind of blasting. So I'm gonna start my taste test off with the one off the PK. And we're actually gonna get, I'm gonna get the bite off of the spinalis, which is, if you don't know what that is, you got a ribeye. It's the, basically that, that piece of meat that runs around the outside. You usually have that fat running through the middle of the ribeye and you have the spinalis running through the inside. See if I can get you a good shot here. And good lighting. There we go. All right, so this is the PK. Super good flavor. All right, let's go over to the silver bag now. There's a piece of the spinalis right here on the end. Same thing, let me see if I can get you a good shot. They both, uh, basically they're cooked exactly the same. And I'll see if this one has a different flavor. All right, let me, let me start off by saying they're both excellent steaks. Either way, super good. Can't go wrong. If you don't have a set of those grill grates, you gotta get one. It, it doesn't matter what grill you have, you should have a set of those. It puts these nice marks on it, keeps stuff extra juicy, super good. So, what do I think here? PK has that original flavor that I'm used to. You know, I grew up in Mississippi. We grew up with charcoal. Um, never even heard of a pellet smoker until I came to Oregon. And you know, they, they're blowing up here in the last, last few years. So this is what I'm used to. This is what I really like. Now, is this a bad steak? No, this is an excellent steak. Super good, can't go wrong, but I'm gonna have to give it to the PK on this one just because for me, it has a little bit more of that original flavor that I'm used to. Um, it has definitely the more of the restaurant style flavor that you, you could get. And, you know, it, I, I tried a long time to try to get a steak to taste just like you do in a restaurant so that I don't have to go to a restaurant, right? This steak in a restaurant, you know, a, a, a 16 ounce ribeye, you're looking at 22, 25 bucks. I paid, these ones were right around almost 12 bucks a piece. So about half price. And they, what, they wasn't even on sale. You can get some on sale and go even cheaper than that. Now the silverback, like I said, it's a good steak, but it has a tiny bit of that cooked in the oven flavor to it. It has some smoke to it. It has some of the char because of the, the grill grates, but it still has that, I was almost cooking in the oven flavor. So today I'm gonna give the winner to the PK grill. This was my favorite. Like I said, either one's perfect. Um, I would never turn down either one of these steaks. And both of them have that, you know, restaurant quality to them. All right, guys, that's it for our ribeye battle between the PK Grill and the Silverback. So let's talk about it below. Tell me if you think what I did was fair. Uh, let's just have a discussion about it. 
and what you might want me to change in the future. Um, I think I did it as fair as possible here. The only thing I, only thing I didn't couldn't do was actually measure the grill grate temperatures for you. I actually tried to go get a temperature gun today, but every store I went to did not have one because I wanted to show you what the difference in temperature was. But those grill grates are supposed to go, you know, I think it said two to 300 degrees over wherever your grill set at. So I think we were cooking on both of them between around seven to 750. All right guys, thanks for watching. And hey, and if you got any questions or comments, go ahead and put them below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and always holler back. <laughs>